Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be making a baseline using the aux function. Now aux is short for octave, if you are not sure about what an octave is. Basically if we were to play a note, say an E, uh, an octave would be playing that same note as in the note name E, but at a higher pitch. So if you've seen this, uh, so E2 and then E3, so the note name is the same, but we're going to hear one a bit lower and the next one a bit higher. That would be an example of an octave. Now if we look at this in MIDI notes, uh, an octave is approximately 12 notes above or below uh, its corresponding note. So that would be another example of an octave. Now, oct obviously means eight, as in like an octagon uh, having eight sides. So if you're wondering why it is 12 notes apart as opposed to eight notes apart, the basic idea is that octave comes from a major scale or an octatonic scale in which if I were to put a, say, an E, scale here, and we'll just do a major scale. So the output here would be we start on 40, and then if you look at how many notes there are in the E major scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and the eighth note is the octave. So that is where we get it. So we would start on E, and then we'd go through these notes, which in this case would be F sharp, G sharp, A. B, C sharp, D sharp, and then the next note would be E. So that is what an octave is, just in case you were unclear. Now the aux function, if we look here in the documentation, it's basically going to take two arguments. The first argument is going to be a note, what note we want to play, and then that's followed by another uh, argument, which is going to be how many octaves do we want. So for example, if we were to put in 60 and then 2, it is going to give us the note 60 followed by uh, a note one octave above. So if we want more, if we were to say put 3 as that second argument, it's going to give us the note that we put in the first argument and then give us two more octaves above that. So it's going to get repeatedly higher each time. So this can be an effective way to use for a bass line um, to add a little bit of movement uh, and add some kind of rich sort of harmonic depth, but it is not necessarily going to define any kind of harmony in terms of like a major or minor or anything like that. So let's take a look at how we might do this. So we're going to make a bass line here. So I'm going to make a live loop. Uh, I'm also going to use synth, so I'm going to use, uh, I think actually I want to do the, you know, I'll do the chip bass. So I'm going to use a bass synth here. Now, this particular synth, um, if I were to say sleep for 0 0.5, got kind of that high-pitched um, sound that kind of goes along with this bass sound. So what I'm also going to do here is just add uh, with FX, and I'm going to use a LPF, which is low-pass filter, which is going to filter out some of that high-pitched sound uh, and just give me a bit more of the low end of that bass sound. Uh, now, the way I set that filter is to use the cutoff, and I'm going to set it pretty low at like 50, so the cutoff is generally between uh, 0 and 130, uh, so about 50 is going to cut out most of that kind of high pitch here. Oh, and of course I forgot that since this is an effects, I'm going to use my do and end block. Uh, I do have another tutorial that gets more into using effects. Uh, I'll try to remember to link in for, to check out as well. So now you hear we do not have that kind of high-pitched uh, frequencies along with this bass. Uh, one other thing I just want to point out in that I'm using this uh, frequency or this effects block, I'm using it outside of the live loop as opposed to inside of the live loop. So the reason being uh, is that if I do it inside the live loop, it's going to create an instance of this effect 
every single time it goes through the loop, which can kind of eat up in some memory and the functionality in Sonic Pi. So it's better to keep it outside, and that way it'll just create one instance of this effect while it is going. Uh, it's a bit more difficult if I want to change the cutoff on the fly. Um, that can cause me some problems, uh, but if I'm going to just keep it as is, then it's fine to sort of leave there. So get back. So I'm going to create this ox, uh, ox with an S. I don't think I need a comma there. So I'm going to start on E, and then I'm going to do two here, and then I'm just going to do dot tick. And so that is going to create this back and forth between these two pitches. This E1, and then essentially what is E2 after that. And you can see here in the console, it's going between 28 and 40, those notes being 12 apart. Now if I were to switch this to 3, I get this nice sort of sequencing through these three E's. So that would be E1, E2, and E3. Now, another thing we can do uh, is instead of dot tick, I could do dot choose here, and then it's just gonna pick between one of those three octaves, the E1, the E2, or the E3. So that just gives it a little bit more interest since there's no real defining harmonic tones like thirds or anything like that. Um, it doesn't really make a difference as far as which uh, octave it is. So using choose, not that bad. And I can maybe speed it up a little bit as well. So I kind of like that effect in a way to um, sort of create a rich sound, sort of would set a foundation to me adding some melody on top of that. So to make a bass line, right now I just have this one static note, this E. So if I want to create some motion, I can um, add some more notes. So what I'm actually going to do is use a, a data structure called a knit in Sonic Pi. Now a knit um, which we can actually go to the documentation real quick and take a look at. So a knit is actually a very interesting data structure in that it takes two arguments or takes uh, a pair of arguments at a time, which is the value you want and then followed by the number of times you want that value. So it will create a sequence of repeated values here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want E, and I want that to do eight times. Then I'm going to do, say, G sharp. I'm going to do that four times. And then I'm going to do A. I'm going to do that four times. And I'm going to do tick. So this is, um, let me zoom in a little bit here. So this, I have now, for sort of this first argument for the aux, I'm going to kind of sequence through these three notes, this E, this G sharp, and this A. Now the other thing I'm going to need to do though is a dot times or else it is going to kind of jump through and around. Although it would probably be okay if I left that out, but just for the sake of this I'm going to keep it. So I'm going to hear eight of these octaves here, and then four of these octaves here, and then four of these octaves here. And this will create a bass line where I have a little bit of harmonic motion as well. And so there you have it. So there I have a nice little baseline that I could build on. So just for the sake of uh, kind of showcasing how this would work, I'm going to create a quick little drum beat here. Nothing too special. Uh, I'll do a sample, maybe like a from here. Mostly. I'm not going to do this uh, in sort of any kind of fancy. I'm going to be real kind of simplistic about this with no uh, data structures just to kind of bang something out here 
can use these built-in samples and sleep one and then I think what I want to do is just this so I got a nice little simple drum beat here thing I want to do is now add a little bit of some melodic quality to this so I'll just kind of call that now and then here I'm going to use another synth uh, I'm going to use growl and what I'm going to do is play now I can use some kind of scale uh, I'm going to use the same note as sort of my foundational bass note here. I am going to do a Phrygian. And I'm just going to choose here, but I want to maybe make this kind of long. I'm going to amp it out at 7.5. And then just to add a little bit of harmony to it, I'm just going to do a single note there. I'm going to release it maybe a little less. And I'm going to make it a little bit lower in the mix there and then I'm gonna sleep for eight so this is just to add some harmonic uh, value on top of this baseline that I have created here Just for fun, I'm gonna add a little reverb onto this as well. And so here we go. knit is maybe I could just instead of having this all in here I could do my knit there and then store it in a variable and then just do it there and we get the same effect so seeing this extra data structure uh, kind of nested within this aux data structure you could just put it in there but that is a basic idea so that was a real simple uh, example of that but you can kind of play around with it and using this aux function to give a little more variation to uh, sort of these single note bass lines that you might use to supplement underneath your chord or your melody or something like that uh, so have fun with that <laughs>